Hello. This episode's podcast is sponsored by Coke Zero. Ah. I kid. We're not sponsored yet, but don't worry. It's coming. Right. Yeah. That's a small can. Until then, yeah, this is a Coke Zero uh, can. You know what I'm saying? Uh, So until then, if you want us uh, Coca-Cola, if you would like a, a partnership with us, I will gladly represent all the mini cans of the can universe. Yeah, you go ahead and do that. <laughs> How you doing today, man? Um, man, I'm good. I'm a, I'm all right. I'm ready, ready to talk about this stuff. Uh, I'm feeling better now than I was after watching that Falcon, the latest episode of Falcon with a Soldier. Okay, well, today we're going to recap this episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, another good episode. They kind of got back to their emotional roots, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't as bad as the first time where they were like trying to find, you know, find all your soft button topics and hit you over the head with them and then shiv you with a scalpel in weird places. But, you know, more, 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 uh, more character overlaying, so to speak. Um, the GRC is taking over jurisdiction of the operation after the uh, John Walker here goes berserk, kills a man. Uh, the episode starts with John Walker's. Uh, it looks like his uh, his military tribunal, so to speak. And uh, man, you know, I just want to speak on that a little bit. Well, it starts with the fight. Ah. And I apologize. It, yeah. it started. It started with the fight. You're absolutely right. Um, Falcon and uh, Bucky. They had to team up, Civil War style, and whoop Captain America's ass. Is a right. bit of a reversal. Um, Bucky broke Captain uh, John's arm. John Walker is juiced up, of course, so he's super strong. Yeah, uh, he was about to kill Sam. He's about to do it to him. Yeah, Bucky comes in, saves him, grabs the shield, breaks his arm. The serum has brought out the worst in John, to say the least. Uh, He's a bit unhinged. Uh, You know, he says we don't have to do this, but he seems like really eager to do the fighting. Right. And uh, it's a a sad tale, man. Uh, I I made Tiki Torch jokes about the guy, right? Tiki Torch Cap, he's not a Nazi, okay? He likes his partners. (laughs) He he really really respected Battlestar. It wasn't like this is my you know this is my lackey here, right? He has a close personal relationship, and that bond when uh, when he died, man, it just kind of broke him emotionally. This is a war veteran, right? Three time Medal of Honor winner. I'd argue he should not be out there. Yeah, clearly he's uh, trauma ridden, a trauma ridden character. He got to super Sur- super soldier serum, and he lost his way, man. And the Falcon finally has to come to realize, like, man, I gotta, I, I gotta take the shield, right? Um, and I'll take it by force if I have to, which I thought was very admirable of him. Even though I did think this episode still revealed that naivete from Sam, but we'll get, we'll, we'll get more into that as well. Right. Well, that's. Uh, I think that's just digging into uh, Steve Rogers' side of, you know, it. it violence don't really have to be the first answer there's different ways to do this and more revealing of the kind of person sam is compared to um well uh walker and bucky um and why cap chose sam over bucky is uh you know more of his heart because when we when we first introduced to sam i think in uh winter soldiers uh, he's counseling. He's counseling uh, veterans yes. and all that. He's That's his job. He's a, yep, yep. He's you helping trauma written war veterans. Right. And Cap and and throughout this whole series, uh, you see Sam trying to do that. He even brings it up. He's like, "No, I've I've worked with people like like her, talking yep. about uh the flag mm-hmm. smasher. Like it's yeah. it's not that yeah. simple. You know, most yeah. of these people can be talked down and all that, but you know, do the writing and John Walker going all uh John Wayne it ruins things and Sammy tries it on John and for a second John is listening yeah for a second and he got triggered when he asked for the shield and he's like oh okay I see. nah you can't take this at this point 
John's really personally invested in what that shield means for him. Right. And he's not recognizing what that shield means for like the world. And right. he let his he let that ego overtake him. And which is what we know from Dr. Erskine, that's more likely to happen than not. Uh, the serum is not meant is not meant for for regular men. Once again, we talk about it all the time, man. Captain America is not a normal person. Like that right. level of gallantry and chivalry and the way he has control over his own ego, that's not very that's not very common trait in right. men right. in particular, right? Exactly. Um, so it was always too much of a burden to put on John. Now yeah. John went to extra step and put that and, and and kind of dosed himself with that serum to put it over the top. But that ego and that pride and that vanity, it was always there. And of course, the serum just kind of boosts those things within you and it makes it worse. Um, I also thought this episode, it made for me personally, me being a military veteran, so are you, it made me more sympathetic towards John yeah. because in his military tribunal, he's absolutely right. He's like, man, you yeah. guys created me. Y'all yeah. made me, you made me a war machine essentially. And I go out there and I do what you tell me to do. And now you're punishing me. And he should be punished. But I, the part that really kind of made me angry was when he took his retirement benefits. I was like, oh, that's fucked up. Yeah, man. I, Man, that the whole, I say the first 20 minutes for that and everything, it really got blip. to me. Oh, I was yeah. like, come on. Leo, you got, you got blipped for just a second. Yeah. It, it, I've seen it happen before. Um I mean, not to this extent, you know, because it's uh, yeah. comic book characters and all that. But it, it, he, he's like, yeah, you, you don't even want to go over the circumstances of what happened. Like, yeah, he killed a person, which he's yeah. done plenty of times before. The only reason mm-hmm. uh, it's different now is because it's all over the internet. And, I think the whole world saw it, right? Yeah, yeah. you can't if, deny it. Yeah, the if, violent if, nature of the act. But I felt like separation from military service was absolutely fair. Yeah, he should have retired with medical benefits because he he's gonna need medical help, and just like the U.S. government tends to do, they just created another enemy of the state, whether they know yeah. it or not, and they did that by casting the man aside, yeah. rather than trying to help him come to terms with what he's been through, and what he just did. John Walker seems to be a good man, and he yeah. did a terrible, terrible thing, and he can't take it back. But the way they cast him out, now he's forced to kind of rely on his own ego again right? and say, I'm still Captain America, right? Right. You can't take this from me. You made me. You made me to do what I did. Now, he's lying about the circumstances because he knows damn well that wasn't the guy that killed uh, Battlestar. He knows that's not the guy that killed him. He knows it. But I think he has to tell himself that because he has to justify why he did what he did. Right. What I meant by circumstances, if it was was behind closed doors and no one saw it, he would have gotten a pat on the back. All right, cool. You took out a a souped up uh, mm-hmm. flag smasher. Yep. Get the next one. That that's what I meant. And yeah, I, I agree. I agree. And and it was in front. It was in front of a bunch of people. Even if he had said all that, it, it would have fell on deaf ears because it's it's the public persona now. Yeah. You know. And we know politicians are all about public. Yeah. You know, the way it looks. Yeah. And um. Yeah. And it's, and. Like when uh, what when Elaine showed up, uh, <laughs> offer him, uh, hey, Elaine, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, showed up. It's like, hey, uh, you know, we can use you and all that. And before that, I don't think the the government, oh, man. You, they must you, not you know that he is a soldier, huh? Your internet connection, bro. My internet, good. Your internet oh, connection, you keep getting blip. It's strong. Hey, Thanos, Thanos, keep doing this. <laughs> <laughs> No, man, I got full bars. I don't know you talking. Nah, nah, you good, bro? Um, what was I saying? Um, I don't think government knows he's a super soldier. I don't think he's disclosed that. Nah, they don't know. Cast him out if that was the case. They don't know. They can't. Hey, you can't. And they, they, they can't find that out either. You know that they, they'll put your ass in that hole and they'll start spearing. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, so for me, it was a lot of emotions. I know what he did was wrong and all that, but still. We're we're casting you out like you you never served. Dude got three medals of honor. Three medals of honor, dude. Like, like come on, what now. are you doing? And by the way, if you don't think any other prior medal of honor recipient has ever committed a war a war crime or a tro- an atrocity in a foreign land, I got news for you, brother. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. He he was absolutely wrong, but I feel like he should have been medically retired and treated for his trauma. Right. More than anything. Uh, yeah. By casting him out, you really you force him. No, no one. Nah, take it back. No one forces you to do anything, but you just increase the likelihood that you weren't going to get good end result with him down the road. Right. And I think they foreshadowed to that as well. Right. Exactly. Yeah. He it's it'll be his decision to make, um, especially uh, with like he he's got trauma and all. He's got to deal with that some, and he's got to provide for his family. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, so no it, it, no it, military retirement, no pay, no nothing, yeah. no medical, no benefits. What like, the fuck? I thought that was far. The veteran in me came out. I was like, oh, yeah. that's bullshit. Yeah, I was sitting there watching it like, oh, no, that's foul. No, 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 no. That, that's wrong. That's so wrong. Right. Um, medically retired, no doubt. Chapter him out, no doubt. He can't wear the shield. He can't represent the country anymore. Right. But you got to help that guy go for, going yeah. forward. Exactly. You, you definitely said he has him done so much. And like you said, you mentioned Elaine, you know. <laughs> her, her character's name is actually uh, Con- Contessa Valentina, you left the door right open for her to walk on through, charm him, yeah. tell him, hey, I love your work. I'm a big fan. I have a role for you in our organization. And what and what we know about Miss Valentina is that she's a former SHIELD agent turned Hydra. Uh, and one, of her, one of her aliases is Madam Hydra. And uh, apparently her and Nick Fury used to uh, get it in back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Her, her and old Tricky Nick. Right. They were a thing. So, uh, you know, Nick Fury knows things too about Contessa. Uh, she seems like a fun girl. Wink, <laughs> wink. Uh, <laughs> so now, looking at her role, what do you think she has planned? Because I think it's, it's going to be sort of a, and knowing what we know about Marvel, keeping it grounded in the real world, I think we're looking at an outright cap coming up. I think that's what we're looking at here. I um, think that's what she plans to do, knowing, and especially knowing that she's Hydra. Right. Well, so John Walker, uh, his his role, uh, his predominant role in the comic books is U.S. agent. Yes. It's, it's, you know, he's just a more brutal and all that version of Cap. Um, so I think it's going towards that. Even though he feels like he's Captain America, I don't think he's going to keep going around. That he'll do something close, U.S. agent or whatever. But her role, so Madam Hydra, um, she pops up in Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is, mm-hmm. I think is a fantastic show. I think there's seven okay. seasons of it. But in that version, um, I, I, I'm trying to remember. Is she if, still shield in that version? Or is she high? So, okay, so first she was an android that was built by this doctor. Uh, okay. A life model decoy. That's uh, Which is big in the Marvel Universe. It's like if someone died, instead of writing them off as dead, you'd be like, oh, no, actually it was a robot the whole time. Gotcha. Type thing. So they introduced that in uh, Agents of Shield, and then there's a version of her where she's like, uh, she's just Madam Hydra. She's uh, in a relationship with the head of Hydra, who ends up being the alternate version of someone else on the show. Gotcha. Um, so uh, it was interesting to see that they recasted her and all that because I thought Marvel Agents of Shield kind of was in the MCU, but I think they're trying to write that out as an alternate gotcha. universe or whatever. Gotcha. Um, but I don't know if since we I think Nick Fury had the scroll come down and get um old girl from Wanda, uh Monica, yeah. if uh this is not in response, but both sides trying to get a team together type of thing. Well, well yeah, because one, one thing we know is po- these shows take these shows they take they 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 have it these events occur a little bit after the blip. Right. Right. Like, I believe spider Man is like six months after the blip. I believe WandaVision is like three weeks after the blip. Right. And I believe this show kind of takes in, in, in place of between that. So yeah. that would make sense. That would make a lot of sense, you know. Right. Uh, yeah. Kind of kind of getting the new Avengers together. She's trying to kind of get a new, you know, super villain thing together. So keep an eye on Zemo as well. If she kept yeah. an eye on John Walker, she had to be looking at Zemo, right? Similar yeah, situation. Zemo. Um, hey, look. Zemo, <laughs> you ain't getting him back. Speaking of Zemo, you ain't getting Zemo back. Uh, Sorry. The Dormelage. The Dormelage <laughs> scooped him up. Yeah, they, they, they got scooped him. him up. Bucky did the right thing. He didn't kill him. Showed Bucky, how much yeah, he's I thought him. that was very emotionally uh, impactful. Bucky showing that I'm not that 
person anymore. I know you think you can control me via emotion. I know you think I'm this cold blooded killer, but I'm going to show you right now. That I'm perfectly in control of my emotions. Right. It's, it's a loaded weapon. You know, he kind of gives him the click. You know, Zemo. From, Z, I'm not gonna lie. Zemo seemed prepared to die. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't have that. I I didn't have it on my bingo card. That's the you second time he was prepared to die. Yeah, yeah. He, and of course, the door Milaje, they show up. Uh, you know, Io tells White Wolf, "Hey, man, you might want to lay low for a little while. Don't come around my hood." They, <laughs> people, hey, people mad at you right now, big boy. Don't come around here. Right. Uh, that was dope. And it. Think about Zemo. Zemo. Zemo's complicated, man, because he was at the uh, he was at the Sokovia Memorial. Like he was really, you know, memorializing those people that are lost. It still has a deeply impactful, like, sort of a thing on him. Yeah. So he doesn't. This version of Zemo doesn't seem, and not yet, just a cold blooded monster. Not yet. Right. Um. He's still very much driven by the events of Sokovia, losing his family. And he's still very much. He's still. He's still very much anti super soldier, aka anti supremacist. Right. Which I thought was great. It was. It was really, really great emotional um bonding so to speak as, yeah, as for both like, of them, yeah yeah as far as like layering the character some more and more as much as you might want to hate zemo he does have his motivations even though he I mean, is to chaka it's it's hard to it's hard to hate zemo i ain't gonna lie it like, is hard to hate zemo like, he, he <laughs> made him so likable man i'm like dude stop doing this <laughs> like that dude killed to chaka he framed bucky like right. he killed a lot of people trying to break apart the avengers right well, right. breaking apart the Avengers, right? You know yeah, what I'm saying? I guess apart. he's like, listen, man, you can't make it out only about breaking a few eggs. All right, shit, I'm sorry, but yeah, some of y'all gotta go. I got a job to do. Right. Um, they I like made the... him very, they made him very likable. They yeah. made him very likable. Also, with his growth, uh, when he tells Bucky that it, Bucky's off his list, because yes. the episode before Sam asked, Well, what about Bucky? He's a super soldier, and Baron didn't really have an answer. But now yeah. he's like, you know what? We're good. Good respect there. I have no yeah. no ill will towards you. It's clear yeah. you don't have it towards me, hopefully. Type of deal. Yeah. You're off my list. Hopefully I'm off yours. And now what he Ooh. said, he said, hey man, I scratch I he said he said you I scratched your name off my list as well. Yeah. 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 It, it, it was a good way to handle it, man. And Zemo went without a fight. The door Melange. Yeah. Look, he ain't got to juice. So he's like, look, I can't fight these motherfuckers. So right. I, I'll go. Okay. Shit. Yeah. And uh, of course, you know, Bucky asked for a favor, which is what we later see in the show. I think is that I think it's a Wakanda tech out Falcon suit. That's the only thing it oh, can yeah, be. Yeah, that vibranium. It, yeah, that vibranium Falcon. Uh, Captain America, John broke Falcon's original uh, Falcon suit. He'll probably get Red Wing back. And I think the dope part about it is it's gonna be red, white, and blue. It was in a black and silver case, but it's gonna be a red, white, and blue suit. Yeah, you think it was a little red hair in it through at people? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think it's a little red hammer. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be a black Wakanda represented suit. It's gonna be red, right. white, and blue. You're Captain America now. It's kind of the tip. It's like the endorsement of Wakanda. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we want we we endorse him to be the new Captain America. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was dope, man. It was dope. Right. Now um, another uh, another uh, going back to the you know like I say emotional roots of the show. Uh, Sam goes to visit Isaiah again. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah's in the garden, mind his own. My, Isaiah just wants to be left the hell alone. Yeah. Sam wants to come and figure out what the hell, where, where it all went wrong. Yeah. And he tells him the story about, you know, I used to be like you, real idealistic, real optimistic about the future of the country. And they showed me otherwise, you know, they they, they kept me in the hole until my until the love of my life died. Yeah. And if it wasn't for some, for, if it wasn't for some nurse, I wouldn't have never got out of here. Right. right, I would have, right. I would have rotted in that hole. Yeah. You know, she pronounced me dead. Now I'm able to. And he tells Sam, "Don't bring me back. Don't say my name. I'm dead." Yeah. Because you I'm don't dead. think I would be dead tomorrow if you if you yeah. bring me up. I, I think he. So there are two ver. So the two versions, the Isaiah and Sam, they're meant to represent an old and bitter generation, considering the past civil rights right. struggles. And then you got Sam which is the new optimistic, newer generation, optimistic. He's seen some change, but Isaiah lets him know a lot of those changes were quite superficial. Right. And I tend to agree. Um, I'll say this, the older I get, I identify more with Isaiah. I'm like, man, they not gonna let you be Captain America, man. Like, right. I'm sorry. 
Like, yeah. hey, had you asked me this question five years ago, I'd have probably been rooting for Sam to take the shield. I actually feel kind of bad for Sam because I I just don't think this is going to end well, given the history, given the past, given the establishment, who controls this country. I don't think they're ever going to let a black guy be Captain America, man. You know what right. I'm saying? And Sam, I give him credit because he's so optimistic and he's even a little bit naive because he tells he tells Isaiah when Isaiah's you know giving him the, the, the old story, he's like, "Don't give me the old bitter old man crap." It's like, "Hey man, it's not crap." Right. I live this right, and right. Isaiah tells him, "You know, I think any black man that takes that mantle, you'll be a damn fool." Right. And well, with the the bitter old man crap, I think it was uh, that was more towards actually tell me what happened. Just don't give me the whole you know the normal story. No, explain to me. Yeah. why you're this bitter old man type of deal yeah. not necessarily that he was just writing off the whole thing because that was before he actually started explaining what happened just yeah. in the backyard yeah. and he's like hey, you know what happened he's like no 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 explain to me explain what happened. Help to me, me what understand happened. yeah yeah right. sam 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 seems to be a bit optimistic yeah and i say personally i used to identify with sam and y'all the older i get i just don't no more <laughs> listen i'm not even Listen, your boy Isaiah's 80-something years old. I'm 34, and I'm like, Shh. <laughs> I wouldn't do that if I were you, my guy. i put right. that thing down. Like, i put it down. Isaiah don't even want to see it. He yeah. doesn't take it out of the bag. Isaiah's like, don't you take that damn thing out of the bag. I don't want to see it. Right. You know, and I think it's easy for younger people to dismiss, like, the bitterness of older generations. But you got to understand, man, they just seen so much. Right, yeah. And I think that's what you saw with that interaction. And I really appreciate the duopoly of the conversation, the two mindsets. Right. I really appreciate how Marvel really, you can tell they're really taking care to, to consider what it means to be Black in this role or what right. it would mean to be Black in this role, the politics behind it. Yeah. I, I, think, they've, I think they're doing a really good job with it. I mean, they're taking care, right? They're right. not, it, this ain't just some simple script writing, no right. emotional overlays. You know, just say these lines, right? They're really yeah. taking care to really present the case for why you should versus why you shouldn't, and being honest about the racial politics. Like, be yeah. honest. Yeah. We ain't got to sugarcoat this, man. Let's yeah. be honest about what this is. This and 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 Sam's been going this whole time, knowing what kind of burden it is, and he's finally willing to accept it. He starts to train, and it's so cool to see. But I just, I, I don't see it ending well emotionally. Anyway, I don't think they're gonna kill him. But you know, just you know, he'll. I think they'll let him down in the end. I, I think it's going to end well because um, it needs to end well. Like so, in real life and in the comic book. So or the on Disney Plus. I don't think. Look, I think it's clear he's going to come in and help save the day, and you can't have the the one version of Captain America busting people up with a shield and then the new person <laughs> comes in and save you and then you write off the new one yeah, you, yeah. they're going to need a replacement they're going to be like hey publicity wise and everything this is going to look great for us it makes sense yeah. right and um but, but when i say in well i don't i'm not i'm talking right i'm not talking about just the show right i'm yeah. talking like long big you know oh, okay. sort of biggest storytelling wise you know we'll see is it's politically it's politically expedient to allow it now because of the optics of what you just saw. Right. But what happens when it gets a little harder? What happens when the optics aren't, aren't as clean cut and you got different right. questions to answer? Yeah. So, so realistically, I say realistically as in the show, it's it it shouldn't really end well because he's gonna run into the same issue of John. You're not a super soldier. You're not a super you soldier. You got wings. I mean, you, you took a lot of L's and yep. as Captain America, you're probably gonna take more L's unless yep. they just give you a bomb ass suit. Yeah. So eventually it should start to look bad when Captain America starts taking L's, but maybe he helps take it into a more uh, I'm not just gonna go in and beat people up, let me actually help type of thing. Yeah. So yeah, if it yeah. goes that way, it a can true go well. ambassador. A true right. ambassador. Yeah, more yeah. of an ambassador than uh send me here to take care of whatever type of thing. Yeah. Um, so but and plus with Bucky by his side, I, I think that'll be uh I, I like to see them both get decked out and accepted by America. 
you know yep. that that'd be neat to see you know in the final yep. episode or whatever um but yeah so they they gave him the supposedly a suit in that case but before then we see we see bucky moving in on <laughs> <laughs> i was hey. gonna get there i was gonna get there <laughs> yeah, jungle yeah. fever you know hey uh which listen, was neat. hey listen hey it makes i think i think marvel made a playful gesture towards the fact that listen that man's been in Wakanda, okay? Yeah. Listen, hey, right? listen, he's been in the chocolatiness <laughs> of nations, all right? And he came yeah. there, he got a little taste for it, baby. He got appreciation. He got an appreciation for the Moco Coco. Listen, I do two bucks. <laughs> I know right? exactly where you're coming from. Listen, yeah. Trust me, I feel you. Uh, I like the playful uh, flirting between him and his sister. I like the fact that they got a chance to bond and kind of reconnect. Sam tells Bucky, you know, hey, man, if you're going to do this, you got to see it through to completion. And you also have to learn to forgive yourself, so to speak. Right. Like, it oh, wasn't, yeah, the, uh... it wasn't it wasn't you. And you got some people on that list that you got to make amends with and they're not going to like you for it. But you at least got to give them that closure. Yeah. Right. You, you got to give it to them. That's what's if that's what's going to help you feel better, help you ultimately move on. Right. But I think and the biggest lesson for Bucky is he just he's got to learn to forgive himself. Yeah. Um, he's so guilt written, he's so traumatized by everything that he went through and everything that he put other people through that it's gonna be a long, hard road ahead, man. And uh Sam, Sam is a and, and this is where some people had to complain that he was being underused in this show as his as his background in grief counseling. Right. And I tend to agree with that, but I, I don't I, I never I never doubted the fact that Marvel would allow him to show that side of himself, right? You know. So and, I, and that's a that's a cool thing. I thought that was pretty well used throughout the show with uh Carly and he pretty much talked tried to talk down every uh situation or at yeah. least explain it. At, he, at least, yeah. Even to John Walker, he's like, Look, he's good at mediating. And I thought that was shown a lot throughout the show. Like when they uh went to jail, when Bucky went to jail for missing his court order uh, therapy. Yes. Yes. And John Walker first tried to team up and Buck and uh, Sam like, look, these are the reason why it wouldn't work. Your government, we're kind of off the books to team up. Yeah. Well, he, he's good at explaining and mediating things. And then with um, what was her name? Carly. Carly. Carly uh, he he was almost done. He almost talked her down or at least got her to understand. But then John Walker. Yeah. came in. I don't think it was ever any talking her down, but he right. at least almost got through to his point of view. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So I, I thought yeah, that, yeah. I thought that was that was used a good amount. I don't want to see that every episode. I don't want it to be yeah. uh, an anime where the, yeah. Yeah. the main anime character's special power is I can talk anybody into being my best friend. <laughs> so, I can talk anybody into being my friend. Just watch. Right. You watch, you son of a bitch. So I, I thought that was done well, and this uh, and with with Bucky, which I I glad I'm glad that it worked with Bucky that they showed that. Mm -hmm. That he showed, he's like, look, you ready for tough love? This is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And I think we all know who the main person is that they're talking about. Yes. The yes. the old dude where he killed his son. I'm not watching that scene. That's heartbreaking. <laughs> Fuck that. No, nah, I'm good. Ooh, I don't need to see it. Rough. Well, hold on. You been we've been eating together, and you and I'm telling you about my son, and you did it the whole you time. Did. I'm pretty sure. So I don't I don't even know how they're going to go with that. I don't know if they're going to make it hard for Bucky and it's something he's going to have to work through or if the guy's going to show forgiveness, you know. But I want to see how they do it. I hope they show it in the final episode um, or at least allude to it. Um, yeah. The writing is just good. It, it's it's, it's yeah. all been good. Top notch as always. Yeah. The only thing I did not like in the last, and I did not like, is that 1980s Rockies montage they had of yeah. Sam? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I Sam. thought I was the only one that noticed. I was oh like, wait a minute, God. are they doing a Rocky montage? That was so they're, they're zooming in on his biceps and he's doing flips. And like, okay, I get it, he's training for the shield. I didn't know right. he was a ninja, I didn't know he was a ninja. Now, I right. didn't know all that, all that back flipping and shit he was doing. I, I was. That was, that was funny. To watch. It was it was it was funny. I, I I it was cheesy, but it was funny. I was like, "Is this a Rocky montage? What am I looking <laughs> at here?" Right. Um. Oh, another nod. Don't let me forget. 
it pretty much confirmed that, right? Sharon Cosh Power Broker, like she sent Buntrock after after Sam again. She oh, sends right. Buntrock yeah. to meet up with Carly in New York and uh wrote that vote on the GRC to read the uh reorganization of the GRC, the refugees. Right. Uh Buntrock is there and he is uh he tells Carly, hey, I'm not really here for your revolution. I'm just here to get that dude that I don't like. He fucked up my last mission, cost me a lot of bread. Uh, right. I thought that was pretty cool showing that Sharon was the one that sent him. Yeah, he's what the, the leaper, I think they call him in the comments. The, I think it's like the leaper or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a and real he ninja type up, of guy. He went head up with Captain America and Winter Soldier. So isn't and he's a UFC fighter, ain't he? Yeah, it's Joe St. Pierre. Right, right, yeah, Jordan, yeah, yeah, he's he's one of the best all time. So it's hey, all time, all time UFC guy. You need Pierre. to see that. Good actor. He's, yeah. he's actually okay. Yeah, he's not, he's yeah. not terrible here. And um, it, I think it shows the end of Carly how far she's going because people are like how how is he supposed to help? He's like I'm just here to kill Falcon. I'm not. I'm just, yeah. I don't care but about she, this yeah. cause. She's, you're right. She's fully made her transition now. She's fully accepted the fact that they already think I'm a criminal. Hell, I am a criminal, so I may as well be a criminal. And that is is that conversation again, man. You can't be a terrorist and a liberator, right? So it's a, it's it's the big question: How do you liberate a people but also not become the same tyrant that you just trying to destroy? How do you do that? Uh, because listen, might means right in this world. So I had this conversation the other day, and I was saying. As much as, yeah, Carly's a terrorist and now she is a bad person, I get how you go down that road if you're trying to right. topple. If you're trying to topple an establishment, man, that's really, <laughs> as fucked up as it is, either, my opinion, what, here's how I always feel about establishments and systems. I don't think you can ever conquer a system. And I know it sucks. You don't beat systems. Systems eat themselves, right? Like the Roman Empire, no one defeated the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was eaten alive through greed, corruption, and just all around incompetence, right? Hint, hint, look around, that don't sound familiar, right? right. Like, it, it, we've never seen that anywhere before, right? I don't think you beat establishment systems, especially right. military powers. They tend to beat themselves. And I don't. And I think it's hard for Carly to accept that. So Carly has this idea in her head, well, no, I'm gonna beat them, bring them to their knees, and also still be a liberator of people. But it's like, Carly, you'll be a liberator for half the people, but the other half, you'll be a damn terrorist. So you, right. you, you're just switching roles, right? You right. put on a black hat for half the population, but the other half of the population, you leave it in the wind again because you saw them as part of the old ways, the old order. So there's no way to topple, there's no way to topple an establishment order while also still being, you know, good old freedom fighter, right? Like right. you just can't do it. It's just too, it's the what's 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 gonna what's gonna be asked of you in order to conquer a military power. Or any establishment order, you're gonna have to get your hands dirty, and that, in in doing that, you will become that thing that you that you're fighting against. Right. So I I gotta disagree with you a little bit. I think just about all liberators are labeled as terrorists at some point in some form yeah. or fashion by the, the governing power because yeah. they're trying to overthrow whatever, whether mm -hmm. it's peacefully or violently. Um, you know, that's that's just how it is. Whoever has the power can say, no, these are terrorists. And it's, it yeah. just becomes that. Now, she seems to be more accepting of that role of, yeah, OK, I'm the more violent type. But I'm the bad if, guy. if they like, OK, so before the episode ended, they, they were talking about 20 million people is going to be kicked out, you know, sent back to. They're supposed to be getting reintegrated back in their populations, but that don't sound good either. Right. So. So it's like 20, that's a lot of people that would most likely side with Carly. And that's all around the world. It's not just, you know, one yeah. country or anything. Yeah, it's not that so, one kid we've been in. But it, it also shows just how these things are done. The, the main guy was like, look, I can make the call right now, have the military get it done right now. This is just a formality him. at this point. And yeah. that's how things are. You got a group, you got a small group of people making decisions yeah. for 20 million refugees 20 million of people who just want to yeah. live normal lives and stuff like that. And uh, so I understand where she's coming from. And Sam gets it as well. But he's like, look, you can't go at it this way. It's, it, you can't, it's weird. He, he says you can't, well, but. Well, let me I ask you, how, how do you, how do you go about that without killing people? Cause I don't see a way to do it. 
you you need someone it. so you need like a Tony Stark who can provide some because like Tony Stark, his tower was what free energy. It was, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. People with the money and the stuff that can back these kinds of uh, transitions. But those so people you, are gone. You need, a powerful, you need a powerful ally, a powerful insider, too, of the right. establishment. Yeah. You need somebody inside that's also interested in changing the old, old ways of doing business. Right. Or just yeah. generally help, helping out. Captain America's gone. He's not there. Tony Stark is gone. There's, like, there's, there's no one there, really. And so it's the world, that world during the transition, and it's just... It's just weird. They don't really have a dude. A dude was just sitting in a room with like eight other people, like 20 other people saying we can get rid of these 20 million people with a phone call. It's like yeah. that. How messed up is that? And then there's it people that infiltrate it. And I like that. Well, I don't say I like, but they showed that she has supporters in New York, Yeah, you know, and stuff like that. It's, that it's was eerie, huh? Show. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it, it was inter- it was all interesting to see. Uh, because the, th- the thing about it is the reason I always say you, you can't topple these systems because there are too many other established, powerful people benefiting way too much. Like you mentioned a Tony Stark, right? That's a comic book character. Like in the real world, people that benefit from systems don't usually want to change it. Right. So, right. well, yeah, you know, I, would just, I would the just in opposition. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, I, w- I was only talking about in the in the MCU and comic book. I, I know that's not how. I'm just saying if for that situation in that MCU, that's the kind of stuff they would need to actually make some kind of change. See, they're not going to topple the government or anything like no, that. Put, no, but to aid 20 million people, you know, and because that's just all publicity at some point. If, if you want to look good, all right, let's figure this out. But they're mm-hmm. in a transition now where they're not even thinking about that anymore. Yeah. They were during the blip. Oh, we yeah. got to come together. But now that's gone. So they're trying to go back. Real world is completely different. It's 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 bitter old man Isaiah. Bitter old man Isaiah. Look, it's yeah. look, it's the real. I think somebody said it before. The problem with like a representative democracies or representative governments is you got a small group of people making. You got a small group of people claiming to represent a large group of people, right? Right. But even within a large group of people, you know, you talk to you go ahead and, and find thirty people. You'll find thirty different goddamn agendas. Yeah. So you can't you can't please everybody. Right. So it becomes a game of musical chairs. Right. And the, the haves are have and the, the have nots, they're gonna be fighting for a chair, right? Or trying to take yeah. other people's chairs. Like that's how that's how this that's how this thing works. Uh so with Carly, I don't think she recognizes just how hopeless the situation is. She right. still thinks they can win. And I'm like, dog, ain't no winning. Ain't no yeah. winning this. Either yes. you're a terrorist or you die trying to fight this thing. Right. Right. Which um, I want to see how it all concludes in the last episode. Yeah. Because I don't I don't think Sam would would kill her, you know, no, it, no. and I don't no. think, you know, I don't know how how is it's going to end, because it, it I think it would be I think the worst way it to end is she dies for absolutely nothing. Nothing gets yeah. changed. The 20 million yeah. people get moved and everything just goes back the way it was. I hope if she does die, she has a sacrifice or something. Someone sees something or whatever and people actually get help. But like but, in the real world, it wouldn't go down like that. That's what I was about to say. Listen, if Marvel's and sometimes this thing here, this story is grounded in reality. If they're going to keep it a buck, Carly die. You 20 million motherfuckers, get on that goddamn boat and get your ass back on where you came from, right? Right. Yeah. It sucks, but that's just kind of how the cookie crumbles, man. Um, yeah. So this is a comic book story written by Marvel, produced by Disney. So maybe they'll find a way to give you a happy-ish ending. Right. I, listen, I'm an adult. Keep it a buck with me. Listen, somebody <laughs> snipe, somebody snipe Carly, get them 20 million motherfuckers back over there and they can be homeless. Right. Because that's typically how shit goes in this world, man. Establishments don't die. I mean, establishments die out. They don't they don't get conquered. You right. Know? Yeah. You tend to yeah. beat yourself. Yeah, but I'm 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 sure it won't all get resolved because I think they I think yeah, it, rambling. It can't all get resolved. This ain't Game of Thrones. You ain't watch it, but the way they ended that shit. Say we're gonna land this plane by crashing that bitch into the ground. Look, I haven't watched it, but you you uh you described it 
very well in your spoiler filled uh, antics on Facebook. So I, I felt like I watched the last season at the very least. I, 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 I do my service, all right? I keep you informed, <laughs> I keep you updated. Just know if you never watch Game of Thrones, it is an emotionally, uh, it's an emotional roller coaster. You will get emotionally gripped by characters, and then the writers in the last season will shit in your mouth. They would disrespect all the investment you ever made into those characters. That's unnecessary. It was unnecessary. Thank you. <laughs> it was. Hey, it's on HBO Max, and I completely get completely disrespectful. Seasons one through six or seven, great. Season eight, and let's land the plane by crashing the plane. The writers had to go into a Star Wars movie, which they didn't even fucking do. Don't get me on a tangent on, on Game of Thrones. I mean, hey, we can say that for another episode. You you can go on it. It's ran about Game of Thrones. I'll, I'll watch it one day. You should. It's a great show. Hey, bro, real talk. Hey, listen, if listen, like you helped me out with with the, the DC stuff. You should go watch Game of Thrones. Fucking superb for like seven seasons. Just How many episodes season. per season? Uh, it's like ten, nine or ten. Okay, yeah, it's I like think nine I, or ten. Yeah, I think I, I think I. It ain't, nothing, it ain't nothing crazy. It ain't nothing crazy. Yeah, but right. it's 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 superb world building. It's superb writing. It's superb, uh, you know, character structures interconnected. Like the way the world's interconnected, the people are interconnected. Fucking brilliant. And then season eight, they were like, ah, yeah, well. Right, I got Fuck this. Fuck this book. Star Wars money. Woo! <laughs> hey, that's some good money. Even if the I know no, they didn't even fucking do that though. So, they. Um... Look, man, look, if you want to be someone else, just tell people you're someone else. You don't got to be your name your parents gave you. Just walk <laughs> around and pick another. You just won't let that go. You just won't let that go. Listen. That was so stupid. I know my mother died for me, but guess what? <laughs> Fuck her stupid ass name. I'm a Skywalker. <laughs> Space royalty. It's good branding. It's good branding, all right? I know man. it says the last Skywalker, and they were talking about, or what was that? The Rise of Skywalker? What's the name of that movie? I don't even remember, man. Um, <laughs> at, uh, Star Wars Episode Nine. Here you go. I think that's what it was called. Here you go. Here is Episode it. Nine. Let's fucking wrap it up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, and, and exactly. Like, Palpatine been there the whole time. Also, she's a Palpatine. Oh wait, not really, because you know she could just change the name. No government. Also, needs, oh man, it was so stupid. Her and Kylo. Here, her and Kylo dyad in the force. What that mean? It's die two people. That's what it means. Yeah, we just made it up. Don't worry about it. I'm J.J. Abrams. Oh, yeah. Oh, so. J.J. Oh. Abrams is the goddamn, hey, J.J. Abrams is a grim weeper. Come to kill your stories. All right, listen. <laughs> Let me I mean, in. <laughs> he, did, uh, he did Star Trek, didn't he? And Star Trek was okay, but I'm not a Star Trek fan. So if you're a Star Trek fan, you know more than I would know. So I, it was okay to me. I watched it. I enjoyed it. And see, and that's how casual Star Wars fans feel about like these Star Wars movies. I'm just like, no, this is terrible. No, this is all bad. This is not good. This see, is not, I good. Feel this like, not good. I feel like I'm a casual Star Wars fan because I, I first time I watched the first episode was, well, episode four was like, I don't know, 2017? Like, okay, I, yeah, okay, 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 yeah, pretty casual. Yeah, but pretty then casual. I, I watched everything except for the Han Solo solo movie and... um. Rogue One, but I, I play most of the games. I, Wait, I read a lot of. You haven't watched Rogue One. It's on the list. <laughs> you haven't watched one of the best. So for all the shit I give Disney about these Star Wars movies, man, Rogue One was a fucking masterpiece, dog. That's why I'm so mad because I know you could do this. I know you can do. I know you could do this well. I know you can, and you simply chose to fucking take a shit on these on these. These three movies, I guess they were like doing the traditional thing where it's like, well, there's there really only been two good Star Wars movies in this whole saga. So I guess we'll just continue it. Like the, the, the Skywalker saga, there's really only two good ones, right? And it's like the first two, right? After that, it's like you didn't yeah. like um what no episode six? Uh it, it was fine. It was just too much of a beat for beat note for episode one for me. Oh. It was fine. I That's like fine. four, five, or six better than all of them. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, episode six. Oh, okay. Oh, the Revenge of the Sith. No, that's that's episode three. That is episode three because they they went back in the yeah four, episode five, or six. The, the first trilogy. Yeah, the first. Now I, I didn't really care for it. It was fine. Oh. It was fine. 
It was fine. It just it wasn't. It was. It damn sure it wasn't Return of, uh, not Return of the Jedi. Uh, the Vision uh, was Empire Strikes Back. It damn sure it wasn't Empire Strikes Back. But nothing's that's Empire. One of the first three. I know Empire Strikes Back is great, but that's episode. So the way they name these damn trilogies. Full episode. Uh, that's, that's episode. That would be episode five in this trilogy in, in this right. series, right? So yeah, it the first episode four and five great. After that, you get a lot of meh mixed with a lot of shit because. <laughs> That first, yeah. that first seek, that first prequel movie, that is shit. Okay, <laughs> that is a heaping pile of shit, and I don't care what nobody say. That's yeah. bad. All right, it was yeah, bad. They are the music. Bad. They gave us Mall John though. Williams, brilliant. What's that? They gave us Mall though. It did give us Mall, which and they took and made Maul into an incredible character in yeah. the cartoons and the other animated universe. So that's great. But you got to see Rogue One. If you watch Rogue One, you're going to really lament these last three sequels. You're going to be like, oh, they can do good work. They just didn't. Like, you so can I do thought, good work. I thought Seven was good. The Force Awakens? I thought that was real good. I thought The Force Awakens was about as good as it was as, uh, uh, as the best of the, 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 the sequels. Uh, it, was, it, was, uh, it was a real beat for beat note, though, with like, you know. Yeah, it was the, the exact the same. The exact same. Yeah, it's the same goddamn story. It was. Right? And I had recently watched it, so I'm like, this is the yeah. same movie. But like, just the way like she's able to fucking fight Kylo blow for blow, uh, yeah. like after only learning how to hold a lightsaber like a month, like a, for like a month, I'm like, this all feels stupid. But I mean, whatever, enjoyable movies. But yeah, it's it's so it's, much there, and the the Mandalorian has shown us this. There is so much there within Star Wars realm that you could do so much good storytelling with. You just got to put forth the effort. No more J.J. Abrams in Star Wars movies. This is to be done. No more. Right. I don't want to see J.J. Abrams. I think the fact that it's on a movie screen condensed in uh, so many hours is the problem. On a TV yes. show like Mandalorian and the Ahsoka show coming up and uh, Kenobi, yeah. I think it'll be a whole lot better because you can flush things out. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. These, these Star Wars shows are going to be off the meat rack. I'm ready for these. Oh, man, these are going to be great. Yeah, yeah, they're going right. to be great. Yeah. These are going to be well, great. So, well, we, we got a lot a bit off topic there. Uh, I know you got some plans to do, so we, we go yeah, wrap we, up this. We episode. gonna wrap this one here up, man. Uh, but <laughs> um, that's what you get me talking about one thing, and I talk about some other shit, and I get mad about some other shit. Man, that's what we do. That's what we do. We should just rename it. We got mad about some other shit. But and you uh, should rename it. I got mad about some other shit. Yes, <laughs> we got we got mad about some other shit. Right, just like the dude behind you. Um, oh, <laughs> uh, we didn't even talk about him interacting with uh with uh Nabi Ruth's family. You know, and yeah. and that because yeah. knowing, oh man, dang. So, all right, I'm I'm gonna get to it no, quick. No, so go go. Yeah. So like he he, you could tell he's genuinely hurt by everything, but he's more hurt that he had to lie. That yeah, the person who killed your son, I brought him to justice. Yep. Knowing damn well that's not the case. Yes. So yes. that leads me to believe I don't think he's done in this show. I think no. he's. If no. Carly's there, he's gonna pop up to try yeah. to take her down. Absolutely. And you can see the um, Battlestar sister. I don't know. She maybe not believing him or what. Maybe she don't trust him or something like that. Mm -hmm. She was giving him some odd looks, but that was also a little hard to watch for me because not just because he's lying, but I, I could feel that he he feels like a complete failure at this point. Yeah. Like yeah. he he couldn't even go do that by himself. He had to get told, no, you need to go talk. To that man's yeah. family and let them know yeah. what happened and then he had to lie to him saying yeah, yeah. everything's good so i got him back trust me yeah it's like i eh, know you did yeah. you got somebody I but i got somebody she knew him <laughs> <laughs> right that bitch hey that bitch is hurt trust me i right. took him the fuck out i took his head off with a shield it's great <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh um, but yeah, yeah man we, we go ahead and wrap this one up man we got locked up in some tangents uh this is what we do so yep. if you like, so I know we say we're gonna talk about one thing. Don't worry, it won't stay there. Uh, so hey man, stay tuned in with us. Yeah, uh, we got the we got the next episode. We're gonna talk about Invincible. We still have to talk about that. That's another incredible piece of uh, writing and animation from Amazon. Uh, stay tuned with us. Uh, we're gonna talk about some more stuff, man. All the stuff we like. That's what we should have named it. All the stuff we like. Yeah. Hey, man, we can, make, we can make this name uh, gender fluid. Uh-oh. Yeah, you can make, he said make the name 
gender fluid. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. That's man. it, man. Whatever it That's wants it. to be. On that note, we out. <laughs> All right, y'all take care. Peace. <laughs>